All right, so over the past couple of weeks, I have been working on my first freelance project with a client that I found on my own. Now, trans to be transparent, this is a client that I'm working with for free, but the hope is that if he likes the deliverable that I send him, then ideally I can get a testimonial or even a video testimonial that I can put on my portfolio. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video about this project, I'm actually working with none other than a physical therapist, which I just find to be truly ironic since that is the exact career that I'm coming from. Um, so I've been working with him to design a marketing website for his PT company. And I will say the beginning of this project has been very smooth, but at this point, I've reached a very large obstacle that I'm going to talk about in this video. But before I get to that piece of it, I just wanna talk about what I've done so far with this project. So the first thing that I did is I sent out a survey to the client to figure out things about his business, who his competitors are, what his target demographics are, if he has any brand identity such as logos or things that I need to be aware of. And so this really just helps me to sort of start thinking about how I might want to lay out this web page. And from there, I did some competitive analysis. So really, I just looked at a lot of different physical therapy websites. Some of them are in the area, some of them not. And I just copied the entire web page, uh, took a screenshot, and I put it into Figma so I can see the entire landing page as a whole. And this would just give me ideas, not only in terms of layout, but also in terms of copy and what I might want to use as far as that goes. The next couple things I worked on are the user stories and the sitemap. So the user stories just sort of help define the scope of the project. So I just had a list of goals that a user should be able to accomplish when going to this website. And then I laid out a sitemap just to uh, give an idea as to what the actual skeleton or the layout of this website would look like. So for the wireframing, I knew that I wanted to try a different tool. I'm used to using Figma, but I've heard that some designers like to use different tools for wireframing. And one really popular one is Whimsical. And so this is one that I decided to try. Um, and I actually really like it overall. So Whimsical is a web app where you can do a lot of different things. You can create wireframes, you can also do uh, user flows, you can create project timelines. Uh, it's sort of just a very neat, not all in one, but it sort of has like several different features all in one, um, kind of like combining project management with wireframing. And so I created my wireframes with Whimsical and it's very easy. A lot of it is very drag and drop. Um, you can have different buttons, input fields, uh, the text input, the text options are very limited. And I think the reason that the options are limited is it makes it a lot easier to just throw stuff on the page without having to be very detail oriented. That's one trap that I often fall into in the wireframing stages. I tend to be a little bit too detail oriented in the wireframing stage where I should just be efficiently putting stuff on the frame so that I can get a sense on what this layout is going to look like. And so once I got done with the uh, wireframes on Whimsical, I could also do a mobile mockup as well because Whimsical has different templates for both desktop as well as mobile. And then I created that and then I just shared that with the client. And again, he was on board with that. And that takes us to the high fidelity section of the project. So for this section, I stuck with Figma, but the one thing that I wanted to try that I haven't done before is I wanted to use a premium Figma UI kit. Now, some might consider this cheating, but to me, the reason why I decided to use this is if I start to eventually build out my freelance career, at some point, I imagine I'm gonna start juggling multiple clients at the same time. And with that being said, I can't imagine that I would be able to have time to design everything from scratch. So I figure that if I get comfortable using a UI kit, 
then I can just sort of tweak it to fit the particular client's needs and I can be a lot more efficient with my designing. Um, I think that that's probably how some other freelancers do it. Uh, to me, this just sort of makes sense in my head. There are a lot of Figma UI kits. The one that I went with was Entitled UI. There was actually someone from my bootcamp who bought this and it just looked amazing. And uh, so I went ahead and bought it. It's, I think, 119 US dollars, but it is almost actually overwhelming how much stuff it has in it. So it has full Figma templates of entire landing pages, I think 12 different examples, if not more. But then it has like the different sections of the landing page. So you have your heroes, you have a feature section, you have a frequently asked questions section, a contact section, and you have different variations of that. You have a desktop version, you have a mobile version, and then you can even dive a level deeper and you can even, there's, there's all sorts of different buttons you can pick, different input fields, and then different color palettes and typography. I mean, the list just goes on with how much how in depth this UI kit is. Uh, it's been really fun to play with and just sort of tweak. So that's what I've been using in this project. The way I use the Untitled UI kit is I looked at my whimsical wireframes and then I just sort of used un the Untitled UI kit component that best matched the, the wireframe. So I put the hero that best made sense, I put the feature section that best made sense, and I just sort of went on like that. And of course I changed the copy and there were like some tweaks that I made throughout, um, such as some of the, there was a pricing section that was there, but um, I didn't actually use it as a pricing section, but I actually used it as sort of a why choose us section. And I kind of had three different um, blocks there. And so that's just some of, one of the ways that I decided to customize it to, to tailor it towards this specific project. All right, so I did the high fidelity screens. I sent them to the client. He loved them. So now here comes the biggest obstacle to this entire project, Webflow. This has been very difficult to learn. I have not used Webflow before. I decided to just start this project without prior knowledge of Webflow, thinking that it would be easier than it actually was. And I can tell you that it is a very difficult software to learn. Now, the reason I went with Webflow is I heard that it is a very great tool for designers to use to actually build out websites because you don't actually need to be able to code to use it. However, I deluded myself into thinking that, oh, I can just copy my Figma screens onto Webflow and boom, it just, it'll work. And that could not be further from the truth. Now, supposedly there is a app that just recently came out uh, called the Figma to, to Webflow app. And apparently you can actually copy from Figma to Webflow, but I've decided to just try this from scratch. And so I'm building out my website in Webflow from scratch, um, basically just having to rebuild everything that uh, that is in my Figma high fidelity screens. The biggest challenge when doing this is that while I feel like I have a very good grasp on Figma's auto layout, which supposedly works very synonymously with CSS Flexbox, the problem is that the syntax is very different. So when I, I know how to use the Figma auto layout, I'm used to the way that they present their options for, for spacing and padding and things like that. But when I'm using Webflow, the interface is totally different. And like even the, the verbiage is different. And so I'm now having to learn the actual CSS terms when it comes to the padding and margins and things like that, because the way that I did it in Figma is not really even similar to how I do it in Webflow. Um, but I will say it's a very good learning uh, opportunity for me because I feel like I'm gaining a much better grasp of CSS by trying to um, learn Webflow from scratch. Now to put things in perspective, I have spent over four hours in Webflow and the product that has come from that is a navbar section and a hero section. It has taken me four hours 
to do that. Now, a lot of this is because I just, I didn't even know how this interface looked. And so a lot of it was figuring that out as well as just figuring out how Webflow worked in general. So I imagine that the more that I use this, the much, the faster that I will get with this. Um, but it has been a, I'll be honest, pretty painstaking, but kind of fun process to learn Webflow. When it comes to learning Webflow, a lot of it is just me trying things on my own, but I'm also using tutorials. And I will say that Webflow by far has the best tutorials I have ever seen. I'm not even kidding. Like their tutorials are so in depth, like they have full blown courses. They have something called the Webflow University and they have entire full fledged courses on not only how to do Webflow, but other UX design things. Like they have a whole freelance UX course. They have a crash course in Webflow. They have an entire Figma to Webflow course, which is what I happen to be using at the moment. And the production value of these videos is absolutely insane. It is so good. The amount of detail that they go over is really well done. And the person that does the tutorials uh, goes over the reasons why he does certain things, which I just really like. And to top it all off, it's actually pretty entertaining to watch. Like there's typically two or three people on camera and they'll sometimes just have this comedic banter back and forth. And it just makes for like really entertaining tutorials. I don't know who, who came up with the idea to structure the tutorial that way, but they have mastered the art of making entertaining tutorials and it's been just amazing to, to learn from Webflow University. And it's helped me a lot uh, with trying to figure out this beast of a program, Webflow. So over the next few weeks, I'll be building out the rest of my web page using Webflow. Uh, I expect that there will be plenty of roadblocks along the way, um, but I will say that this is a very enjoyable process. I think it's just fun to learn software that is difficult. I don't know, there's something very rewarding about learning something that is just inherently difficult. Because if, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. And so there's always this initial draw to something new, right? Like Webflow is sort of the shiny object that I saw and I'm like, ooh, that looks cool. And then literally as soon as I started using this, I'm like, fuck, this is gonna be really hard to use. But if, if I can just get through that, and, and this relates to a lot of things, but when learning something new, but just getting through that rut of, okay, I've had the initial wow factor, now it's the, oh my God, this is actually gonna take a lot of work to learn. I know that on the other side of that, it's gonna be immensely rewarding. And even like the little wins that I have with figuring out, oh, so this is how you do this in CSS Flexbox. Just those little wins, uh, just give me a boost in motivation to getting better at using this software. And so I'm looking forward to just building this out because I think I'm gonna learn a tremendous amount about Webflow by doing this as opposed to just watching a ton of videos. Again, I could probably make this a lot simpler by using the Figma to Webflow app. And that's probably something I'll try out in the future, but I think just learning this from scratch is just a really great way to figure out how this tool works comprehensively. Um, now, if you're interested on how I even got into this freelance project, you can check out this video here and it talks about how I even found this client that I'm now working with. And um, I think that's it for this video. So until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.